All right, to be fair, P-Val do poop a lot, and that is making it a little difficult for some of our wonderful zookeepers to be able to keep up with this chaos. Oh my gosh, look at all of them come over here to get some food from their little foraging spots. It's so cute. And also, I think that we're actually having trouble keeping up on the P-Val food, now that I think of it too. Ah, uh, that's why we have all of this uh, pecking going on right here. Ah. Uh, but that's okay, that's okay, because you know what? I really feel, for one, that party peafowl photographer Amy is quite capable at the job, but we'll give her a little bit of training so she can have a little bit more, a little bit more uh, skill at scooping up that peafowl poo, I suppose. And speaking of peafowl, it's been a while since I've checked on all this, but ta-da! We now know everything there is to know about the peafowl! Huzzah! Good job! Oh my gosh, I'm so relieved that Miss Rose, uh, or Peafowl Perplexer Mallory, I believe, is the one who was doing the research this time around. Let me double check. Alright, we'll go ahead and train Mallory up. And Mallory, are you assigned any particular place? Yeah, Peafowl Party Plaza. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and Mallory, we're going to move you from studying those wonderful peafowl to looking at the new mascot for our leafy lore keepers the giant malaysian leaf insect <laughs> i cannot believe i have not had giant malaysian leaf insects here before uh also where the heck am i okay there we go <laughs> but i can't believe we've never had leaf insects before and i can't believe that i've not tried to go ahead ah, i found one that I've not tried to go ahead and I've not tried to have gold quality leaf insects because they're so beautiful. I love them in our pixel zoo. I love them in real life. And I am kind of surprised I haven't spent more time with them. I almost think that it is kind of part of the nature of, okay, almost, almost, almost like part of the nature of the fact that they are so well camouflaged that I just sort of forget they're there quite often which is not my goal, to be fair. Uh, let's see, how close can I get? <gasps> Hello, little one. Oh, I can really see your little eye beans. This feels like using my macro lens. That's so cool. Oh, it's been so long since I've really given myself the ability to just like zoom in and check out what our leaf insects are up to or any of our little exhibit animals. Hello. So, oh, and that gives us different angles on the interior. Oh, I remember when it was so much more difficult, so much more difficult to go ahead and do this. I love it. So hopefully we will be getting some babies from these two pretty soon. And slowly but surely, we might be able to improve our leaf, uh, like insect population until we can have some that actually are like gold quality and the healthiest of the healthiest. And I will be very proud about that. And also just a moment, if you take note, the Malaysian giant leaf insect is really fascinating because not all species of leaf insect do this, but they actually have little marks on their sides, as you can see, that makes it look like this is a leaf that has been already chewed on, that this is a leaf that already has a little bit of damage, which makes them a little bit less appetizing to, you know, leaf eaters, and also gives them a more realistic look. So if they happen to be on a tree that, you know, if you're the shiniest leaf on a tree that all of the other leaves kind of aren't looking their best, you're gonna stand out. And the entire modus operandi behind the leaf insect is to not stand out <laughs> so that you don't get eaten. <laughs> and they actually have a very long time in the egg for insects too, which surprised me. Like cats have babies faster than leaf insects come out of their, their little eggs, which really, really, really surprised me. Um, let's see if it mentions it. Only one mating event per lifetime. Whew. Easy to reproduce in captivity. Females are fully grown at seven months and reach sexual maturity at eight months old. Females are uh, parthenogenic, meaning they can lay viable eggs without needing to mate. Which, if you guys have seen the news recently, a alligator actually has recently had what they call, quote unquote, a virgin birth. And that is where she did the same thing, where she went ahead and she actually had viable eggs that hatched with clone daughters of herself. So daughters with the exact same genetics as her. That is something that has been observed in sharks as well. And it's been observed in a lot of different reptile species. It's really fascinating. I wonder when people first realized that happened. Like I need to sit down and do a little bit of thinking about that because basically 
uh, a lot of the female animals can produce clones of themselves as kind of like a protection, I think, of if you weren't able to find a mate. <laughs> like, for instance, this alligator who was by herself for a long time. And then the female will lay approximately, uh, now we're speaking of leaf insects again, of course. The female will lay approximately 40 eggs at a rate of one to two per day. <gasps> Whoa, I didn't realize that they actually mature separately because I'm so used to thinking about insects in terms of like spiders, where the spiders actually have their babies all in like, the same egg sac. So I didn't even, I didn't think about that. Also, eh, oh my gosh. Okay, we have an escaped tortoise. And also a sick baby peafowl. Uh, is the water, is it just that there's that much poop? Oh, that's right. Before I got distracted by the leaf insects, I was going to have another keeper pop on in. And we're going to welcome in. Dun, dun, dun. We're going to welcome in a new keeper who's going to be part of Party Peafowl Plaza. Let me go ahead and make sure that you stay in this area, my friend. There we go. And this is actually going to be another one of our fantastic patrons who make all of the these adventures possible. And we're going to be welcoming in Mon, uh, Manuka Bunny! Manuka Bunny! Oh, jeez. Okay, now I can see where I'm going. Manuka Bunny, you are going to help out with our peafowl. So, and you're also around the Leafy Lore Keeper area, so you're going to be helping out with the leaf insects too. Hmm. Hmm. So I wonder... I wonder, what should you be? Maybe like the, you know what? You're gonna be the um, peafowl chick. Uh, let's see, peafowl chick wrangler. Yeah, like just running around collecting a bunch of the peafowl chicks and trying to take good care of them and hopefully providing them with the delicious tasty noms. There is our photographer, Amy. Let's see, where did, where the heck? Where did you just go? <laughs> Where did you just go? Oh my gosh. Okay, copy. Oh my, my word. Okay. Um, there you are. You actually don't need to inspect fire in the forest. I know that that would be kind of fun to go and observe another area, but you're actually going to be over here. Okay, I think, unfortunately, I can't convince her to maybe do something else until she goes and she sees that. So let's pick her up. And if she wants to go look at fire in the forest come on manuka you can go ahead and you can give it a little looky loo but then we got it we got to get a move on okay where is fire in the forest anyway that's where we're keeping some of our um wow you know what following a keeper around to see how efficient our layout is is really making me realize it's not that efficient after all where where is it where is, what okay Oh my gosh, it's all the way over here. <laughs> that actually is a spot that we have people. And did, was that a protester? What are you guys protesting? Eh? Oh geez, okay. So uh, under a dark log happens to have a whole bunch of unhappy animals right now. Give me just a second. Uh, we have Barkley and Dark Hiss. Oh my goodness. The boa constrictors. There. They didn't want their children involved in their life anymore so i have now gone ahead and find found new homes for those boa constrictors phew but okay so projects projects i want to make sure that some of our leafy lore keepers are still being trained up because i want them to be experts in their field before we send them forth to do other leafy lore in other zones so let me come and make sure that you guys are all getting some training Oh, Tulene is almost ready to be set free! Tulene is going to be the first Leafy Lore Keeper to graduate from the Academy, which seems fitting since Tulene happened to gain a lot of experience going ahead and giving a talk over here. And speaking of the talk for our Leafy Leaf Bugs, uh, I do want to come in and put down a couple more talk points because I don't see why we should have to limit ourselves to like, you know, one talk a year. That's not enough for me. I want more, and I also want more plants over here. Uh, that's nice. I like that. Okay. I love anything Anything that basically provides a ton of leaves is going to make me happy. Okay, let's do a small tree like this, and then scooch it back a little, just so we can kind of fill in this spot without having to get too complicated about it. Uh, and then I want to put some ferns. Dog grows bush. Oh my gosh, that'd be fun though. Oh, I kind of want to do this now. <laughs> okay, hang on. I'm going to make a new talking cover 
because I put this together myself. It's a little temple talk cover point. So let's merge that all together and give it a name so that it'll be easy to repeat. Temple talk point. And this one is not covered in leaves. We could go ahead and we could leaf another one alone. I wonder if I put them like this? Well, we want the talk points to kind of face the, the people, don't we? Maybe? Or maybe it's just gonna like come out with the leaf insect, no problem. Huh. Well, okay, we'll put another, another temple like column like this. And then I might put another one right here because I want, basically, I want to see people learning all the time. I want them to walk down here and just be utterly enchanted with our leaf bugs. Okay, I'm going to need to put that right there. Gotcha. And I, what's the point of having a talk area where, like, you only have the talk once a year, eh? Especially when it looks this nice. And I would really love- oh, we need to put down some donation spots too. Oh, this is actually really fun. All right. Ironically, I think we're about to have a talk anyway. <laughs> and it's it's gonna be a very popular one from the looks of it. That's so cool. Uh, and then we can dash in a few more plants real quick. Maybe. Perhaps. Just for me. Because I love them. Uh, let's see. Bird nest. Do I need to put that up there? Well, that could be kind of fun. All right. So I'm just adding some random plants all over the place. Uh, let's see. And then, yeah, look at that. Is Tulane giving the talk again? Because that's really delightful. All right. So we'll put down a few plants. I really Ooh, love putting the plants in. Oh, bamboo! How did I forget about bamboo? It's such a good filler for so many spots. I'm just gonna throw some bamboo in here. How have I not put bamboo down by our village that's totally supposed to be built out of Asian houses? <sighs> Deep sigh for the Siri and her silliness. Okay, let's see. I really love having lots of plants all over the place. Um, let's do another one back here. Okay, I'm being too timid. I just need to like jump in and start putting lots of plants down. And then common grapes! Oh, see, we need like a, a pre-made grape vine because spending on the time that it takes to make a grape vine every time is just not time that I tend to have. Uh, there we go. <laughs> okay, that makes me very happy. Um, and we can get a couple more talks over here in just a minute so that people can learn more about leaf insects. And we might actually check to see if we can get either a better male or another female in there as well, just to up our odds of even more little leaf- Oh! How did I forget about you? Stink plant! Oh my gosh! Oh, and the pincushion flowers! Oh, I've forgotten about so many things! But I, I just, oh, and I haven't even played with the ombu tree. I, oh my gosh, what are you? You're pretty. I don't even know where that's native to. I love when I get to discover new plants as well. Ooh, fallen mossy tree trunks. Why have I not been playing more with you? Like that, that's perfect. That's perfect for us. We like fallen trees. We like moss. Whoops. Let's see. You're not a shark. I don't need to spin you. Okay, let's do this, and a little bit more like this. Ugh. Ugh, I love mossy trees. Um, yeah, this is- this is delightful. This is what happens when Siri gets distracted by being able to play in the plants. Uh, ooh! Staghorn ferns! Staghorn ferns! Not a drill! I love staghorn ferns so much! Let's do, like, a nice medium one over here. There we go. And then I think I can get, like, a couple more. Small, maybe a large one. Hmm. On the side of the temple? Because these guys are really pretty. I love staghorn ferns. They're one of my favorite uh, plants because... Oh, that's not really the way they look. Because they are huge, beautiful ferns that just have such a, a, a delicate look to them. Uh, they've been some of my favorites for quite a long time. Oh my gosh, the strangler figs. <gasps> okay. Okay, see, this is what I meant when I said we- Oh, the Swiss cheese plants. 
The Swiss cheese plants! This is what I meant when I said we need to go ahead and have like pre-made gardens. So then when I get it into my head to get very, very, very excited about say a jungle area, we've already got that covered. We can just go ahead and like plunk some things down like over here. All right, let's see. Then we've got a tree, the custard apple tree over here. Hmm. I mean, it, it does its job of just kind of filling in spots. Okay, now let's come over and let's put some more talks over here because this is too beautiful of a talk. Let's see. Whoops. Um, select seating, link seating. Uh, can I not link seating to more than one, one talk area? Eh? Really? No educator assigned. Is it a specific educator every time? Status educators can assign that. So no educator assigned requires a staff. Oh, of course. I am such a silly goose. See, this is why the Leafy Lore Keeper Academy is helpful for me as well, because then I can come in and I can remember, oh yeah, kind of need to take care of that if we want to see anything fun happen. So let's do another one in March where my birthday is. And then let's do another one in what what facility is having a negative okay well apparently it's not having a negative enough impact that people are going to tell me what what they're fussing about uh but there we go so now we have multiple really really you can only have seating areas for like one thing huh too bad i want to give multiple talks so people are just gonna have to crowd around here anyway and speaking of talks and the giving of talks, let's go ahead and grab... Oh dear. <laughs> let's fix this temple talking point, for one thing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and... There we go. And then I, I can come in and remove the stackhorn ferns just for now. And this is going to be the, like, temple talk point. Um, blank. And we'll just leave this one blank so we have at least one of those functioning. And speaking of things we're supposed to be leaving blank so that we have them functioning, I need to go get the education panels and sprinkle them around here as well. Uh, but I wanted to put in a few talk points for the peafowl, which would be really nice. Okay, let's see. Yeah, we can have pretty peafowl talks. Oh, there's trash on the ground. How dare you? Pretty peafowl talks maybe over here because that would be a good spot and then another one over here and i do want to start adding in the red pandas that i threatened all of you with a little while ago soon too oh i love it i love how slowly but surely we are developing a beautiful pixel sanctuary Oh, and by the way, so since we're going to have some PFL uh, edumacation going on here in just a second, I can go ahead and let you guys learn something cool that I learned about PFL while I was doing research for, you know, showing up here with all of you. And that is that we actually have learned that PFL have that beautiful iridescence inside of their feathers due to the fact that they have got... Almost done. Whoops. But due to the fact that they have um, their, the keratin and some of the other compounds that make up their tail reflect the light. And I kind of already knew that, but when I was doing more reading about it, what really helped me get very excited is that, let's see, one second for the work zone, I'm getting distracted. But when I say that the keratin reflect, like the, the, the way that you have beautiful iridescent pea fowl feathers, basically, and I picked a female, so not a great example, but she's still there and shiny, is that the shape of their feathers reflects the light. So if you wet the feather or you put some sort of material on it, it will not have the same color because if you put, say, like um, glycerin, on the feather then it will change the way the light can reach the structure of the feather and it will be a different color and that is not the case for things that have their own color that they just are solid about like for instance a flower and or like the fur on a cat for the most part <laughs> 
And I just thought that was really, really fascinating. And so what some researchers have been doing is, ah, hello, ma'am. But what some researchers have been doing is they have been taking glass that they have just done tiny micro etches in to mimic the, the very, very tiny molecular structure of the keratin in the peafowl's feathers. And they can actually get color of of just the light reflection on the glass. They don't take the glass and they don't put on uh, like some sort of compound or paint. They just tried to mimic with very, very tiny tools the way that the peafowl's feathers are structured, kind of like a snowflake if you want to think about something really small like that. And they were able to get color on the glass just from the way the light reflected off of it. And I thought that was really cool. <laughs> All right, so now we have a couple peafowl pox. Uh, no educators assigned, but hopefully we'll have some people soon. So uh, it requires a staff member to operate it. And I'm pretty sure... Okay, oh, that's because it's in Party Peafowl Plaza and not Leafy Lore Keepers. Huh, see? Slowly but surely, catching on. And then we're gonna come over and we're going to have a talk in, let's do July. And we're gonna have another talk in, um, let's do February. And hopefully more people will come and be impressed by our fantastic peafowl. I mean, I feel like the education talks bring a ton of people this direction, which is really cool. Uh, oh, and what would also be really cool would be maybe moving over a couple more of those bin designs next to our leafy insects as well. What would be a good leafy insect? I see this one. This one would be really good. So let's actually grab you and we are going to merge this together. Did I get everything? Not yet. All right. What about now? Merge together. And what we're going to do is we can do, uh, so this is donation. Um, let's see. Donation model thatch roof. There we go. So we're gonna have one of these pieces. Whoops. We're gonna have this piece come and start setting examples for what I was telling you guys about just having like a base model prepared. Oh my gosh, look, cause the seating doesn't work. <laughs> okay, maybe I should do like half of the seating for one talk, half of the seating for another. That's hilarious. Uh, but we could go ahead and we can have like the donation bin just sort of on display next to everything. And that will be the model for the donation bins. And then we can have a donation bin where you can actually drop some dollars that could go maybe right over. Well, we'll put it over here for now because we actually have to put down the donation thing first. And that way we have the one right here is just going to be like, whoops, hey. That will be our model one. And then this will just be the one we can actually use. So let's come this way. Oh, people are gathering for one of the, the, the peafowl talks. I'm so excited. Okay, I'm gonna move this over here. Uh, okay, who's escaped now? I need Annie on it. Callisto, for crying out loud. <laughs> All right, I'm sure that Annie is going to go ahead and cat, like take care of that because that's what Annie does, is take care of the, the escaped animals. She is the animal tracker after all. And I'm going to unlink the seating from that one. And then I'm going to, let's see, like seating, can I, interesting, so, oh, oh, is it just because I can't, oh my gosh, is it, is it just doing that because I can't reach the seating areas, only in little talk seating, what, what, huh, okay, well that might be something I have to work out with my leafy lore keepers. Um, oh, I see. No, it's still because, there we go. <laughs> it's still because of that. All right, link seating. There we go. I wish, I wish upon a fish that they would just use both all of the time, but that's not the way we have things. Oh my gosh, Hufan, why are you, oh dear. Okay, well, where are we? <laughs> all right, look, there's a lot happening over here. Callisto has avoided capture. Annie, <laughs> where are you? <laughs> Are you over here? It's a different vet. A different vet is trying. See, this is why you should just let Annie catch, like, Callisto. Random vet. I'll have to help. And Hannah, my perpetually stressed flamingo, is still perpetually stressed. 
<laughs> I need to give her like a retirement pool party area. Yay! Okay, so this is getting quite crowded now with animal talks everywhere, with our lure keepers being trained before we spread them out everywhere. Uh, I like, what, what facility? Oh, this one, well, I can get away from this spot then. What are you guys doing? Oh, one of my educators. I see, little elf, my almost absolute expert lore keeper uh, was giving an impromptu talk over here. That's amazing. Phew. Wow, this has really like changed so much since what it was. Because if you guys recall, this is our renovation of the Peafowl Plaza. This is really awesome. I'm so proud of us. And we've made the leafy lore keepers and we're working on like our leaf insects, which I need to go ahead and add more information about. Uh, they don't even have little, little signs yet, but we're gonna get there. And I'm just really pleased with how all of this is turning out. Oh, I mean, look, it's all leafy. It's wonderful. It's chaotic, leafy, and wonderful. And please, no, we don't need, no, 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 my dear, there we go. <laughs> and it's still chaotic all over the rest of the zoo as well. We're not done because I do want to work uh, a bit more over here. And obviously we need to clean some of these areas up and we're actually going to redo this to be a little garden in the near future, but one step at a time. And at least we're finally creating places that I can look at and I can see as being permanently part of our world and very beautiful. So thank you guys so much for joining me on yet another chaotic leafy adventure. I'm going to, oh geez, oh my, where am I going? I'm going to see if we can dig ourselves up some more lovely leaf insects pretty soon, and I will see you guys next time. Oh, oh crying out loud! Aldo, not again!